you know what? It looks like I turned this lecture off when it should have been on and vice versa. So let me repeat what I just did. Uh, I noted that pi over four is 45 degrees. So in the first quadrant, an angle of pi over four cuts the first quadrant in half, two 45 degree angles. If we work our way around the unit circle, we have pi over four, two pi over four, which is pi over two, three pi over four, 4 pi over 4, which is pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4, which reduces to 2 pi. And the really great thing about the sines and cosines of the multiples of pi over 4 that don't reduce the odd multiples of pi over four. Not only do they all have the same cosine and the same sine, but the sines and cosines are the same. The sines and cosines of all of these angles are square root of two over two. Pi over four, cosine is square root of two over two. Sine is square root of two over two. Three pi over four, the cosine is square root of 2 over 2. The sine is square root of 2 over 2. And because we're in the second quadrant, we make the x-coordinate, the cosine, negative. In the third quadrant, the cosine is, neg uh, is square root of 2 over 2. The sine is square root of 2 over 2. And because we're in the third quadrant, both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are negative. Both cosine and sine are negative. In the fourth quadrant, seven pi over four, the cosine and the sine are square root of two over two. And because we're in the fourth quadrant, we make the y coordinate or the sine negative. In addition to practicing making unit circles with just those multiples of pi over three that don't reduce, Practice making copies of the unit circle with the odd multiples of pi over 4, those multiples of pi over 4 that don't reduce. Make circles just with the multiples of pi over 4 and do this several times a day for a couple of days. You'll know them for life. Now let's look at pi over 6. Pi over six is the same thing as 30 degrees. So an angle of pi over six is one third of a right angle. So each of these quadrants is divided into three angles of measure 30 degrees or three angles of measure pi over six. We have pi over six, two pi over six, which is pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, that doesn't reduce, 6 pi over 6, that's pi, 7 pi over 6, that doesn't reduce, 8 pi over 6, but that's 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. And 11 pi over 6, which doesn't reduce. And then finally, 12 pi over 6, which is the same as 2 pi. We're only interested in those multiples of pi over 6 that don't reduce. Uh, the other angles, we already know their sines and cosines. The cosines of all of these angles are the same. The cosine is always square root of 3 over 2, and the sine is 1 half. 
cosine is square root of 3 over 2. The sine is 1 half. But because we're in the second quadrant, we're going to make the x-coordinate or the cosine negative. Third quadrant, the cosine is square root of 3 over 2. The sine is 1 half. And because we're in the third quadrant, both x and y are negative. So both sine and cosine get a negative sign. And then finally, 11 pi over 6. Cosine is square root of 3 over 2. Uh, the sine is 1 half. And because we're in the fourth quadrant, we put up negative sign in front of the y coordinate or the sine. The multiples of pi over 6 that don't reduce, it's that simple. The cosine is always square root of 3 over 2. The sine is always 1 half. We just have to make sure that the correct plus or minus sign is out in front. And I would practice doing the unit circle with just those multiples of pi over 6 that don't reduce. I'd make several copies of this circle every day for a few days, and we'll know these for the rest of our life. This is probably the easiest way to learn the sines and cosines. Now, have I ignored some angles? Yeah, I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, the multiples of pi over 2, this is where the x and y axes intersect the unit circle. So we start, oh, by the way, pi over 2, that's the same as 90 degrees. So if we start here and go pi over 2 or 90 degrees, we wind up here. We go another distance of pi over 2. We get 2 pi over 2, which is pi. We go pi over 2 again, and we wind up at 3 pi over 2. And then if we go a distance of pi over 2 again, we wind up at 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. The sines and cosines are easy to figure out. We're on the x-axis, so y is 0, and x is 1. Here, we're on the y-axis, so x is 0, and y is 1. And note, x-coordinate is cosine, y-coordinate is sine. x-coordinate is cosine, y-coordinate is sine. <clears throat> We're on the x-axis again, so y is 0, x is negative 1. And here at 3 pi over 2, we're on the x-axis, I'm sorry, we're on the y-axis, so x is 0, y is negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, cosine of negative 1, I'm sorry, cosine of, ah, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. I should mention the angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. If I start here on the unit circle and I go counterclockwise a distance of pi over 2, I wind up at the angle pi over 2. If I start here at the angle 0 and go clockwise around the unit circle, that's considered to be the negative direction, and I wind up at negative pi over 2. If we divide the first quadrant into increments of pi over 6, we have pi over 6 and 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. 
If we go in the opposite direction, uh, we have negative pi over 6 and negative pi over 3. And what's between pi over 6 and pi over 3? That would be pi over 4. And between negative pi over 6 and pi over 3, that's negative pi over 4. Uh, when we're working with inverse trig functions, we will have a need to know the sines and cosines of the angles between negative pi over 2 and 0. So we'll write the sines and cosines down. Cosine of 0 is 1. The sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. The sine is 1 half. Cosine and sine both of pi over 4 are square root of 2 over 2. And cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Sine is square root of 3 over 2. <coughs> Going in the opposite direction, the cosines remain the same. Cosine of negative pi over 6 and pi over 6 are the same. Cosine of negative pi over 4 and pi over 4 are the same. Cosine of negative pi over 3 and positive pi over 3 are the same. The only thing that changes are the signs. And we take the corresponding sign for each angle in the first quadrant, and in the second quadrant, we just make it negative. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Sine of negative pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Sine of negative pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Sine of negative pi over 3 is negative square root of 3 over 2. I've included these because when we do inverse trig functions, uh, we'll have a need to know the sines and cosines of the negative angles from 0 to negative pi over 2. <clears throat> so after we learn the other unit circles with the multiples of pi over 3 and pi over 4 and pi over 6, use that information to learn the sines and cosines of the angles between negative pi over 2 and 0. <clears throat>